Welcome back to another in our series of great chapters in the Bible. Our chapter today comes from the New Testament letter, 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2, Living Stones. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to Him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in Him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing, when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in His steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in His mouth. When He was reviled, He did not revile in return. When He suffered, He did not threaten, but continued entrusting Himself to Him who judges justly. He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By His wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. There is a town up the road from Traverse City, about an hour to the north. Its name is Charlevoix. A beautiful town with manicured landscapes and waterfront properties on the lake and bay. At one time, it boasted the world's largest cherry pie pan. Yes, that's a real category. (laughs) There is another distinction that this wonderful city has to its credit. It has structures called mushroom houses. Breathtaking works of architecture and design, using at times rocks weighing several tons, and some shaped like something akin to those found in the stories about hobbits from Tolkien's tales. The creator of these homes has passed on to his reward many years ago, but the houses continue to tell his story decades after his passing. His heritage lives on in these stones, though they certainly can't talk. Peter uses a most unusual term that seems contradictory on the surface, living stones. He first refers to Christ this way, and then the Christians, using the same word. 
In verses 4 and 5 of our chapter today, he writes, As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. His descriptive phrases are filled with wondrous pictures for the mind's eye. He begins this portrait in verse 2, likening us to newborn babies longing for pure spiritual milk. But Peter comes back to this rock time and again. He writes, laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And Christ, as the stone the builders rejected, has become the cornerstone. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Peter moves on to describe the believer in verses 9 and 10. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Remember that phrase from Hosea 1? We are sojourners and exiles. This world is not our home, as the songwriter penned. Paul refers to himself this way, an ambassador in chains in Ephesians 6.20. As an ambassador and a sojourner, we are guests of this world. As a guest, we adhere to the laws as we represent our king and our kingdom. Therefore, Peter urges them in our chapter today in verse 12, Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. One wonders what the surroundings of Peter was as he pens this letter. It would not be hard, perhaps, to envision him walking in a foreign land, himself a foreigner under the jurisdiction of a foreign country. That may very well be true as he signs off his letter in the end. He writes this in chapter 5 and verse 13. She who is at Babylon who is likewise chosen, sends you greetings, and so does Mark, my son. Though Peter uses such exquisite language to describe the Christian, he remarks more than once the notion of the persecution they and we will endure. Beginning in chapter 1 and verse 6, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. In our chapter today, in verse 20, What credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if, when you do good and suffer for it, endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. Continuing on to chapter 3, and verse 14, But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. Still again in chapter 4, and verses 13 and 14, But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. And finally, in chapter 5, and verses 9-10, through 10, Resist Him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. For all of Peter's lofty language to describe our elevated place in the kingdom, he is quite vivid in the suffering we, the living stones in the spiritual house of the Lord, are to endure. Yet the hymn tells us quite rightly, heaven will surely be worth it all. Wouldn't you agree? And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow and look at another of the great chapters in the Bible.